Okay, in this video I want to do a couple more examples about applying rules of exponents and these are going to be a little more complicated. We're combining lots of ideas. Some of them will be, you know, things that we've seen in previous videos, but uh, one of the new ideas is we can simplify. Okay, so remember, you know, when we were multiplying, if we had like bases, x to the n times x to the m, what did we do? Well, we added the exponents, was what the rule said. But now instead of multiplying, we have division. Well, multiplication says add the exponents. Well, division ends up corresponding to subtracting the exponents. So there's two ways to think about it. Um, you can basically combine them by taking, it's the same base, you take the top exponent minus the bottom exponent. That would go in the numerator of the fraction. Um, you can think about all this as being over 1. Or likewise, you can take, um, you can just leave the thing in the bottom and then subtract away the exponent on the top. So I'll make use of both of these rules. Um, the other property, um, it says, remember if x, if you have x raised to a negative exponent, you can rewrite that as 1 over x to the positive n. So a little tricky here, definitely I think some places to, to go wrong, so hopefully we'll, we'll do okay here. So I've got my first example, 3x squared y to the 4th to the 5th over 3x cubed y to the 7th to the 3rd. So remember the first rule, it says you, if it's in parentheses, you just multiply the exponents. So 1 times 5 would be 3 to the 5th. Then we would have our x squared to the 5th, we'll take 2 times 5, that'll give us x to the 10th. And then we'll have uh, our y, since it's 4 and 5, we multiply those, and that gives us to the 20th power. Now on the bottom, again I'm going to stick my little exponent in there, we would have 3 raised to the 3rd power. We have uh, our x cubed being cubed, so again we multiply 3 and 3 will give us to the 9th power. And then we have y to the 21st power. Okay. Some people will start multiplying out 3 times 3 times 3, they'll do it 5 times and get a big number, and then they'll take 3 cubed and get, I guess it's 27, and then they'll start simplifying. But it's much easier just to use properties of exponents straight away to, to help you simplify. So what I'm going to do, the way I do these, my own personal preference, um, you can always take the top minus the bottom, so maybe let's do that, um, just to illustrate, and then I'll kind of show you what I do to maybe make it a little faster. So, okay, so I see that there's threes, so there's the same base. One thing you can do is you simply take the top exponent minus the bottom exponent, and then we would have x to the tenth minus nine, so ten minus nine, so I'm taking the top minus the bottom. And then we would have y, if I leave the top exponent and then I subtract away the bottom exponent, we'd have 20 minus 21. And you can think about all this as being over 1. We've basically moved everything to the numerator. So let's see, this is going to give us 3 to the second power, that's going to give us x to the first power. This is going to give us a y, if we take 20 minus 21, that's going to give us to the negative first power. So again, you can think about all of this as being just divided by 1, that doesn't change its value. Typically people don't want to see negative exponents at all. People want to see only positive exponents. Since everything is being multiplied, and this is something that's important, if there are any pluses or minuses inside of here, you have to be careful about you know moving things around. But the rule says if everything is being multiplied on the top, there's only one thing on the bottom, um, as long as, if there were more things on the bottom, as long as there was multiplication, you can move things freely. So 3 squared is going to give us 9. x to the first will give us just x. I have y to the negative first. I can put him in the denominator, and he becomes to the positive first power. So we could simply write this as 9x over y, and that would be our solution. Typically what I do, um, you know, I kind of, again, skip this step. What I do, you know, so maybe let's, uh, just another way to think about it. To me, it's a little faster. 
I do the same thing. So I look at my threes. I see three to the fifth and three to the third. To me, the bigger exponent is on top. If I take the bigger number minus the smaller number, five minus three is two, wherever the bigger exponent is, the number will stay on that side of the fraction. Okay, likewise, we have x to the 10th over x to the 9th. Since the bigger exponent's on top, I know the x is going to stay on top of the fraction. And then I take the bigger number minus the smaller number. 10 minus 9 would be 1. Then I look at my y's. I have y to the 20th and y to the 21st. Well, 21 is a bigger exponent than 20. So the y's are going to live on the bottom of the fraction. And I take the bigger number, 21 minus 20, and that gives me to the first power. And then we can simplify. 3 squared will be 9, x over y. Um, this is my own personal preference. This is what I like to do. I take the bigger minus the smaller, and wherever the bigger exponent is, that's where the variables will stay for that base. Um, this way, I kind of skip this step about having to do negative exponents and then shuffle things around. Everything just ends up correctly being in the right place. Don't have to do it. Again, uh, you know, all roads lead to Rome, so w whichever way you prefer. Okay, so let's do our, set, uh, our second example as well. So we have 5xy squared to the 4th over 5x squared y to the 6th. We'll do the same thing here. So we would get 5 to the 4th when we multiply. We can stick our x to the 1st in there. So we would get x to the 4th. 2 and 4 is to the 8th power. On the bottom, 1 in times 6 will be 6. We have x. 2 times 6 will be 12. y to the 1st uh, being raised to the 6th power. Again, we multiply. That'll give us just y to the 6th power. And now I'm going to do the same trick that I showed you at the end. I'm just going, going to um, just hopefully put things in the correct place. So I look at my fives. Okay, so I'm looking at my fives. I have like bases so I can combine them. I look at the exponent. Well, six is bigger than four. So the fives are going to stay on the bottom. If I take six minus four, that's going to give me to the second power. Likewise, I look at my x's next, so I have x to the 4th over x squared. Well, again, x, uh, the exponent of 12 is bigger than the exponent of 4, so the x's are going to stay in the bottom. If I take 12 minus 4, that gives me x to the 8th. And then I do the last thing with my y's. Okay, I look, I've got the same base, y to the 8th over y to the 6th. Okay, well now the bigger exponent is in the numerator, so the y's will stay on top. And then again, I just do the same thing. 8 minus 6 will be to the second power. Um, and then usually the only kind of simplification is just the numerical part. So we've got y squared on top, 5 squared is 25, and then we have x to the 8th left over, and that would be how this original expression would simplify down. So. All right, just a couple of different ways to look at it. I hope that doesn't confuse you at all. Um, again, I think a lot of algebra and math in general is finding a way that works for you and that you're comfortable with. So, um, you know, definitely feel free to use either way. They both eventually get you to the same correct answer.